Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I thought I would do some gel printing. I have one of the stencils from the October Stencil Club. If you haven't already seen the other tutorial where I show how to use the tree leaf stencil and gel printing, check that out. You'll see it in the eye up in the corner or as a suggested video. So this one is kind of like a lattice or a panel, if you will. I thought it was just kind of a pretty design. And what I want to do is I want to fill in the voids. These are the open areas. So in this case, I think what I want is a yellow and I've got an orange, maybe even a little bit of red. So I'm just going to shake down some paint and let's add some color to this. I've got a 12 by 12 gel plate here and I've got a soft rubber brayer. I'm using just all purpose acrylic craft paint. This brand happens to be by Anita's. You can use a heavy body acrylic paint. There's a lot of different products that you can use. So start with what you have. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and brayer this all over. In fact, I'll even kind of fill in the whole outer area of the gel plate too. I've got, uh, I've got some, what is it? This is a spool from thread and I'm just going to come in here and basically I'm lifting the paint, making a little bit of pattern on this outside edge. We already have it on the gel plate. Let's make it interesting. And I'll do it down the side, wherever there's not a stencil, I'll kind of add some pattern. I'm just cleaning it off over here on the side. I'm going to take the stencil off and then I'm going to let this dry for a minute or two until that paint is not shiny and we'll come back with the next layer. Now that this has dried, it's time to lift it by adding another layer of paint. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to mix a little bit of an ivory and a green, which will fill in. So I, I think that'll be a good look for this. So I'm shaking up my green, I don't know, light avocado, it says. So I'll put a little bit of that down. And then I've got my ivory. Oops, crusty bits. Don't do like I do. Don't open your paint over your gel plate. <laughs> I think I need another green. My other green's almost empty, so I'm just grabbing another green. This is leaf green. I'll use my soft brayer and brayer this out. Grab some copy paper and let's lift this. I'm just going to lay some copy paper up in this top area here. That'll give me a nice band that I can use. Just cleaning up the edges. Okay, so now I'm just going to lift this off, and I have a little bit too much paint on there, which is okay, but it gives it an interesting technique or texture. I'm going to go ahead and lift this paint up here. just kind of gives me some more texture on my mop-up page. All right, so let's lift this one, and if there's paint left over, I'll do the same technique where I just lift it up with another sheet of paper a bit. I think I did a better job. And I did. It doesn't have hardly any. But I think that turned out really cool. Isn't that a fun print? It's got that shades of green in there. You've got the different shades of red, yellow, orange. Kind of cool, huh? All right, so I think I'm going to do a couple more gel prints, and then we'll come back and we'll make a project. I want to clean my gel plate, so I'm just getting a wet paper towel and just lightly rubbing it over the gel plate because I really want a clean slate when I do my next gel print. I have another stencil from the October Stencil Club. I think I call this one wind, if you will. I grabbed a couple of shades of blue. This one's periwinkle and this one's royal blue. So I'm going to put a little bit of both onto my gel plate. I'm going to use my soft brayer and brayer this out. I'm going to put some texture up here. So let's see what I want to use today. I have this as a different spool from thread. So I'm just going to come in here and overlap it. So it'll give us some interesting texture. And I'll use that smaller one around the edge. All right, I'll lift the stencil and I'm going to put it in my water bath and let this dry completely. And then I'll be right back. 
the paint is dry so now it's time to come in and put the next layer of paint so we can lift the print and I think this time I'm going to go with a lighter blue this is called morning blue and this is charcoal so I want to mix the two together just a little bit by swirling it around I'll get some neat patterns in the background we'll use my soft brayer again to brayer this out I'll just use copy paper to lift all right so I cleaned up the edges just a little bit and now I'm going to peel this top portion so that's the little top portion that I got I'll use this to kind of mop up a little bit more all right so there's my wind if you will the little swirls and a background all right i'm going to clean up just a little bit and come back and let's make a little journal page the desk has been cleared back and so i've got a few supplies that i've put out here that i may use i may not use we'll see how it goes and i've picked a gel print that i made from the tree gel print tutorial from a few days ago and i thought i would use that to start my journal page and then we'll pick up the green and kind of red colored one and then we'll also use the blue with the wind if you will all right so i thought what i would do is i've made a foundation page to work from which is just two dictionary pages glued together trimmed to be eight and a half by eleven and this is also eight and a half foot by eleven i'm going to cut this in half because i want to separate these pieces while I have my paper cutter out, I'll go ahead and cut this in half again. No, I take that back. I'm not going to cut it in half. <laughs> I, I forgot I was going to do something different. All right, so this page is going to go on this side. I want to reinforce this edge just a little bit because I want to make it into a pocket. I happen to have a strip of book page here. That's just to help make this a little bit stronger so when you go to put something in the pocket it doesn't rip really well really easily I'm going to take some distress inks and go around the edges of both pieces of paper I'm folding this piece in half because I want it to become a pocket so I'll go ahead and do this edge as well I've reinforced this piece I've folded this piece I think I want to make this a little bit uh, more distressed and vintage looking I've got a book page here and I think what I'll do is I'm going to rip down the length of this I'll do another strip as well and I want to put this I think I want to put it like this so it's sticking out just a little bit from the edge so let me glue this down now if it matters to you which way the text is going you'll want to glue it like consistently the same way but at the same time if you don't don't worry about it so that will reinforce this edge here by placing that on there let's trim off the excess I'm going to repeat that on this side over here all right now I'm going to use the distress ink and go over this book page edge that looks pretty good I like the way that's coming together I'll slip this over the edge to make a pocket to put journal cards in and this is going to go on this side so I want to put something down the middle here because it's rather plain so I'm looking at this trying to decide which way I want to go I think I like that this had more text on this side all right so let's use let me grab a stencil this is from the October stencil club I'll just put it right down the middle here I don't need to stencil in the whole area just in this center section so let me get some blending tools I have fossilized amber distress oxide only because I like the color I have it already use what you have and I've got an oval makeup blending brush I'm going to go in here and just kind of fill this in a little bit and then I'm going to change to aged mahogany make sure I get my stencil line back up I should have washi taped it down so that it wouldn't move on me it just gives a subtle pattern in the background I'll go ahead and go right around the edge just a little bit all right so this piece is going over here to create a pocket 
and this piece is going here. So I'm going to flip this over for a moment because I want to put a stencil pattern on this side as well. So I think I'll just repeat the same pattern. I may not need all of this when I get done because I may change my mind as I design, but I find that if I go ahead and place the stencil patterns that I want, then they're already there and it doesn't matter if I cover it up. I got to uh, play just a little bit. All right, so now we have a subtle pattern on both sides. Let's go ahead and glue this side pocket in place. So I'm just going to look at this and I'm just going to glue right down here on the side or top and bottom. I'll flip this over and glue the other side as well. All right, so that side has a element, a gel print on there. So let me grab this piece that we already have strengthened and I'll glue this down as a pocket down these two sides here. In fact, I think I want to glue this so that it's hinged in a pocket. So I'm looking for a scrap of paper I can use. This will work. So what I'm doing is I want this pocket to be the full width in case I put a wide journal card in it. So I'm going to come down the edge here and glue another piece of paper down. Use my bone folder to smooth this out. I'll trim off this edge and this edge and slightly trim the corner here. So now I'll glue down this edge and across here and here, and then that'll give me the full depth of this pocket. Okay, I'm liking how this is starting to look. I'm going to let this dry for a moment before I do any more fussy cutting and adding embellishments. So we're going to turn on this side and look at what can I put over here to give this a little bit more interest. So the page will be folded in half. We'll have this much of an area. So I think I want to use part of this gel print. And let me grab some more supplies. Okay, I think what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of this gel print to the page, maybe on the top and the bottom. So let's cut, let's cut a one inch strip. So that would be embellished down here and then we'll make a pocket foundation to put it on. I happen to have some paint chip samples and I'm wondering which one this would look better on. And I'm thinking maybe this one. So I want my pocket to fit on here, but I don't need it too deep. And these cards are four inches deep. So what happens if I cut this down? Looks like two and a half inches. Get it right where the holes are on this. Maybe like that. And what if we put this across here? All right, so let's make this about five and a quarter inches wide. So I'm just kind of looking to see how much to cut off. All right, so I've got this piece that would go down here. This would go on top of it. Maybe even we'll grab some, like this mushroom piece. And then I'll trim another piece to go up here. So I'll go ahead and cut this in half. So that's going to go there. This one's going to go up here. And then this will go in between, kind of giving us some additional writing space in the background there. So let's apply some distress inks to all of these pieces, and then we'll start gluing them into place. I've got the oak leaf stencil, and I thought it might look kind of neat to have a leaf pattern on this yellow piece of paper. And... I think I'll do it in the fossilized amber first and see how that looks. So that gives it a subtle pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and use the aged mahogany next. I've got the punked brass. It's kind of a brassy glimmer mist. It's got a little bit of a brown tint to it. I'm going to spray that 
over this whole design. So that'll add some shimmer. Actually, I'm going to do it without the stencil. Oh yeah. So that deepens that color just a little bit. I like that. That was punked out steam, uh, punked brass that I used there. I'll dry that real fast and then we'll move on. Okay. I'm liking how this is starting to come together. So I'll go ahead and glue this piece right up at the top. And I'll trim off this excess piece on this gel print and I'll glue it down on top of the paint chip. All right, so that piece is going to go down here. This piece is going to go up here. I'll go ahead and fold my page just so I know where my center mark is so that when I glue my pocket down, I'm putting it right in the center. All right, I'll just glue this in the center below this green and red strip. I see I've got this little pine cone. Oh, wait, but I've got this guy. You know, I have this little sunflower. Well, he's kind of big. I don't, I don't want him, him. I give it a boy girl name. Ooh, what about this guy? You know, that looks kind of interesting for some texture across there. This is from Calico Collage. She has a fall foliage little kit. Okay, I think I like that. So I'm just going to glue this right across the bottom. I've got this little saying that says Indian Summer Came. So I'll put that up there. All right, so we have a pocket here that we can put some stuff in. And I've got a pocket over here. Let's add some embellishments to this side. I've got this mushroom element. And I just think it's a nice contrast on here. So I'm going to glue this down. It'll be kind of a tuck spot. Maybe we'll find a little card or whoever ends up with this in their journal may want to put something in it. All right, I'll flip this over and let those dry. Let's work on this side a little bit. Okay, so I've got uh, when the leaves fall. How about we put that up here? I've got a little bit sticking out from the other side, so I'm just going to trim this off. Okay. And let's see if I want to use this mushroom. I think I like this little mushroom. I'm just going to glue it down here on the bottom. Going back to this side, I have a little postcard that I made earlier. I have another tutorial that I show how to make this postcard just using rubber stamps and using some tattered angels to colorize it. So I think that looks good. I've got a bingo card from Calico Collage and I was trying to find a place for this little squirrel and I forgot that I made this a tuck spot. So that looks kind of cute right there. So we need a journal card for over here. I've got another one of these. These are bingo cards that Calico Collage made for Autumn. So I think that would look good there. And then I have a different one that we can put in here. And then this is a pocket. So let's make a chart card for that one. So I'm going to set this aside for a moment. I've got a five by seven journal card here. And then I have the blue wind, if you will. And I thought it would make a neat background. So I'm going to trim this down to be, oh, let's see. I got a five by seven card, so just slightly smaller than five inches. So we'll have a little bit of a border and just slightly smaller than seven inches. That will fit right on top of my journaling card. I've got the tree from the autumn chipboard pieces and I've got some leaves here. So I think what I want to do is paint these. I'm just getting all my little elements ready. I need a paintbrush. I've got some leaves and the tree. So the tree, I want to paint a brown. So this is espresso. All right, I've got a good coat of brown paint on there. I think I'm going to come back with a little bit of red. So I've got, this is cherry red. I kind of like that. Just a, a slight variation of red in there. All right, I'll let that dry for a moment. 
and then I'll paint these little leaves. These are some chipboard leaves that come in the kit. All right, I'll let this dry just a moment. They're almost dry and this piece is almost dry. So now I'm going to make sure my fingers are clean before I pick up my papers. Let's go around the edge of this guy and then I'll adhere it onto my foundation paper. I like that as the background and then the tree I'll place right on top. So let's glue that down. I'm just putting little dots of glue on the tree branches. Okay, I like that. All right, these should be dry now. So I'm just going to set them here so I can see them. I'll apply a little bit of Distress Ink Walnut Stain to the edges. Leaves turned red. I think I like that. Let's put this up here. And then what if we put just a couple of these, just kind of laid around the bottom, the base of the tree. I know the leaves are too big for the tree, but if I made them any smaller, we wouldn't have been able to use them because the laser would have just obliterated them into nothing. <laughs> All right, so there's a journal card that we made using that gel print in the background. I know probably y'all were thinking, man, that's a bright blue, Linda, but I think it works out pretty well. All right, so now this piece will go. All right, so here's our journal page. We'll come to this page first in our journal, if you will. So you'll see this area with the mushrooms and then flip that over and you got another mushroom here we have a space here we could tuck something in how about this that could fit right there and then over here we've made a little bit of a writing space and we've got a bingo card in the background and a postcard and we've got the little squirrels behind the mushrooms and then when we flip this over oh let me open this up first then we've got this journal card, a five by seven journal card that you can access from either side, really. And then this side, when the leaves fall. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed seeing my take of taking some gel prints, some book pages, some digital art, and creating a junk journal page. <coughs> If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Do check out on Monday when I go live at 3.45 p.m. I do more tutorials much like this where I take elements, make journal pages, and then we create a journal with them. And then on Thursdays, I have a recorded premiere video at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time that you can watch with others at the same time and we can chat together while we watch it. Those are usually shorter videos. I'm trying to keep them short. This one may be kind of long, but that's when you'll see these types of videos. All right, everybody, check the description box below for links to the products that I use today. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Have a fabulous day. Bye, everybody.